There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. Precisely 6.43 p.m. on Maple Street. Steve, what was that? I guess it was a meteor, honey. Came awful close, didn't it? Much too close. Steve, the power's off. I had the soup on the stove and the stove just stopped working. Across the backyard, see if the power is still on on Floral Street. I'll take a run downtown. Maybe I can get it straightened out. Yeah. Mr. Brand, Mr. Brand, please don't leave here. You might not even be able to get to town. It was that way in the story. Nobody could leave. They sent four people, a mother and a father and two kids who looked just like humans. But they weren't. Car started somehow. We never did come out to look at that thing that flew overhead. He wasn't even interested. He always was an act boy. But why didn't he come out with the rest of us to look? What do you say we go ask him? Let's not be a mob. What's happening? Well, maybe you better tell us. How do you figure it's dead at last? The whole thing is just weird. Well, if that's the case, Les Goodman, then explain why you... Look, let's just forget it. Now, Don't... wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let her talk. Go ahead. Explain why. Well, a couple of times I've come out on my porch, and I've, I've seen Les Goodman here, standing in his yard, just looking up at the sky. As though he were looking for something. You scared, frightened rabbits, you. You're sick people, do you know that? And you don't even know what you're starting here, because let me tell you, you're starting something here that... That's what you should be frightened of. Yeah, I think maybe everything might as well come out now. Your wife's been doing a little talking, Steve. About some of the odd things you've been doing. Go ahead. What's my wife said? Let's get it all out. Let's pick out every idiosyncrasy of every man, woman, and child on this whole street. You're all set to find a scapegoat. You're all desperate to point some kind of a finger at a neighbor. Well, there's no need getting so upset, Steve. It's the monster. It's the monster. Shotgun? Would somebody think a thought around it? What good is a shotgun? You want to talk, Steve? You want to talk us right into a grave? And you'd let whatever's up there walk right over us, wouldn't you? Well, some of us won't. It's Pete Von Horn. Charlie, you killed him. How was I supposed to know who he was? Didn't know. Charlie, Charlie, the lights just went on in your house. It's Bob Weaver's house. the pattern. They pick the most dangerous enemy they can find, and it's themselves. But I take it this place is not unique. By no means. Their world is full of maple streets. 
and we'll go from one to the other and let them destroy themselves. But the tools of conquest do not necessarily come with bombs and explosions and fallout. There are weapons that are simply thoughts, attitudes, prejudices. For the record, prejudices can kill, and a thoughtless, frightened search for a scapegoat has a fallout all of its own. And the pity of it is that these things cannot be confined to the Twilight Zone.